to design a data subsystem, we have to first identify which statements have to deal with data. So start and done are always part of the control subsystem, so we can ignore them for now. And for example, if you see a statement like this, if b7 not go to s3, it means that if b7 is 0, then go to s3, otherwise keep going. So this is controlling where we're going. So it's part of the control subsystem. If we have inc b like this, it's performing some operation on our register. So it's part of the data subsystem. Now our next step is just to list all of these statements out, the statements that have to deal with data. So I'm just listing all of them out. And then at the same time, I'm going to list the step that they belong to. So this belongs to S2, S2, S3, 5, and 6. We'll see how this can help us later on. Now we need to list the operations that we have to perform for each statement. So here we have an input x and we want to load this input into our register. So we need to use the load. So same thing here, we load y and load z. Assuming that we have an adder, we don't know how it works, but assuming that we have that, then here we just have to do add a and b where a and b are our inputs. And here, assuming that we have a module called ink, then we can just do ink b. Same thing here. Now for this u right here, we are just getting the output from register a and put it into u and we don't use we don't do anything with this U, so we can directly wire it, okay? So once we have this table right here, we can start drawing the schematic diagram. Now let's start with this first statement right here. First operation, we have a load. Okay, so this is my loader. And it takes in an input and out, output something. Okay, so this is called register A. And it's taking in X. Okay, it's loading X into register A. And it has a signal, let's call it C0. Okay, now same thing here, we have register B. and is taking in input y, okay? And I'm calling it c1. Last thing is register c, and it's taking in z, And control signal, I'm going to call it C2. Okay. So now I have an adder. And this adder has two input. And this one is taking the output from register A. And then the second input is taking the output from register B. Okay, now the output of this adder is going back into register A. So I'm drawing this and it's going back into register A. Now the thing is my register A is already taking in X. So what I need here is a mux to select which one to take in. It's either taking in X or it takes in the output from my adder. So what I need is a mux. Because a mux lets you select what what to output. 
Okay, so I have to erase this and I have to draw a mux here. Now I'm going to call this a mux and this is 0 and 1 and then I have a selector and I'm calling the selector C3 and then it's going to output me either the result from my adder or it's going to output whatever X is, okay? So that's done. Now B increment. So increment is simple so then we can have it inside the same box that we have our loader so I just need to add an increment here and a control signal let's call it C4 so the control signal is telling us what telling the computer what it has to do so in this case if my C4 is on it knows that it has to increment if C1 is on it knows that it has to load okay so same thing for C here. We have an increment. Mm, yeah, it's kind of small. So draw this with a pencil so then you can go back and erase and change your schematic diagram because in the beginning we would never know what we need. Okay, so after this we have, we're done with this. Now U is just a wire directly from A. So I can just have you here. And now we have this and what we have to do is we go back to our code, our pseudo code right here and determine what we have to put into my control signal, control subsystem. So let's say if I have a control subsystem right here. Okay, so start is always part of the control subsystem. So I need a start signal. And it's, if we have a done, then it's going to output a done here. Okay, now what else do we take in for this control subsystem? Remember how we said this one is controlling where we're going. This one is also controlling where we're going. And this V7 can take from this register B, the output of this register B, we can pick out V7. And then same thing for C7, we can take it from the output of register C. And we just have to get C7 from here. And then what we're outputting is we're outputting the whatever from C, the control six node that we have. So C0 to C5. Now, this is the trickiest part. Determine what control signal would be on and what to be off. Okay, so let's look at this load X right here. In this case, we know for sure to load it, C0 has to be on. So we put C0 is 1. Now, it's picking the, in this mux, it's picking X. So C3 has to be 1, right, because it's picking this input right here. So we're writing C3 equal to 1, and then whatever I don't write here would automatically be 0. So in this case, C1, C4, C2, C5 would be 0. Okay, now same thing here for B load Y. So my load is 1. And whatever in here, so whatever inside your the same box has to be off because we don't want to load and we don't want to increment at the same time. So we have to tell the computer that, okay, I just want to load. I don't want to increment. So C4 has to be zero. And then same thing. If I don't mention it in here, it will just be zero. So C0, C3, and everything else would just be off. Now, for this one is the same thing. I have to load, so C2 is 1, and C5 has to be off. Now, 
for this ad right here, we don't have an, a control signal for ad. So what we really want to look at is what is storing into. So the result of this ad is storing into A. So we want to look at this register A right here. So is this the output of this adder is going into this mux and is zero right here. So my C3, I want to set it to zero. So then it pick the correct input. Okay, so it pick the correct output. Okay, so C3 has to be zero. And then at the same time, I want to put it into A. So my load signal C0 has to be on. So C0 has to be one and my C3 has to be zero in order to pick this, the output of the adder. Okay, this is important. A lot of people get confused on this. So I wanna look at the lecture slides right here. Let's say we look at this um, add MA right here. So we are looking at this adder right here. But what we really want to look at is what it's storing into. It's storing into register M. So in this case, we have to deal with C8, right? And then we also have to deal with this mux right here. So in this case, we want to select the output from um, we want to select the output from the adder. So my C1 has to be set to zero to get this. And then at the same time, my C8 has to be set to one so that it load this value into my register M. And it's not mentioned here, but C4 has to be off. Like what I said earlier, whatever, just one signal is on and then we don't want to do clear, right? So we have to turn this off. So C8 has to be 1, C0, C1 has to be 0, and C4 has to be off. Same thing as this um, shift right here. We don't look at this shift box. What we want to look at is we want to look at the left-hand side, which is register M. And to load this, we need to set C1 to 1 so that it select the output from the shift so C1 has to be 1, and C8 has to be on so that it loads, and then C4 has to be set to 0, okay? So that's kind of tricky. Now, this one is simple. Increment, we just have to turn on the increment signal and turn this off. So C1 is off, and C4 is on. And for this one, C2 is off, and C5 is on. C5 is on, okay? 